starting at the top. Let's start at the bottom and talk oil control. This is You're a man uh, from Mount Hart, by the way. The oil <laughs> ring is overlooked. Like everyone wants to talk about these cool, you know, top rings right. and all of this, thin, gas ported, right. capless, all that. The poor oil ring just gets <laughs> overlooked. Like it gets no love at all. He's like Rodney Dangerfield. But like, so one of the things about uh, oil control rings is mm -hmm. most of the time that traditional three-piece ring mm -hmm. is what we've all known when we've looked mm -hmm. at these things. You know, we've got our expander and we've got our two rails there. Right. But there's also some two-piece rings out there. And, you know, we noticed one. This is an HKS piston. They actually interrupt the pin, which is one of the things oh, I'm not yeah. a big fan of. You know, right. when, I, when I design a piston custom, I try to avoid that. Mm -hmm. But when they do it, they kind of get away from it by using this built-in expander is its own oil support rail right oil support rail that's so, what i was looking for so what they call this is the scraper mm -hmm. right and this really is a great example of talking about oil rings right so this is the scraper and it has this you know u-shaped face to it because it basically just has like you have two rails here to scrape oil right these have two little edges on them to scrape oil and of course there's little holes in here to allow the oil to go back through and get to the drain back so you've got your oil drain backs right here. So you, you allow that oil that's on the cylinder wall to get back to the sump. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's the job of the oil control ring is to control the oil, to scrape mm -hmm. the oil off the cylinder wall because you know oil's got lower octane value than fuel. Mm -hmm. So you don't really want oil in the combustion chamber because right. detonation is not your friend. It's certainly not the friend of your piston. But back to this little piece. So this is the scraper. This has basically no tension to it. If this was there by itself, it really wouldn't do anything. Because mm, nothing's forcing it against the walls right. to scrape the oil. So with this is a spring, and you can actually literally see the coils. This spring is what gives tension, right? Those little ridges there, it's a spring, no different than a valve spring mm -hmm. or any other spring. Right, so you get that tension by putting the spring in behind it, and we're trying to do it live, so of course it's gonna be <laughs> problematic but you probably get the idea that if you put this spring in here it's, it's trying to force it's it out. trying to force it out right and that's what gives it the ability to scrape that oil well no different is this mm -hmm. this is also a spring so it's not just a spacer to have these apart so it allows the oil to flow back what's interesting about this arrangement of the three-piece oil ring mm -hmm. which is why we love it so much is the width of this rail is what determines how much pressure is being put on the expander. Okay. The expander never touches the cylinder wall. Right. Only the face of the oil rail does. So the OD of the oil rail is the OD of the cylinder bore. Mm -hmm. The ID of the rail is what's touching these tabs. These little lugs on the uh, inside. Okay. Those tabs aren't just there for, to locate. It's what allows that rail to, to be pushed out. Yes. Gotcha. Apply a force against the cylinder wall, so the scraper's pushing up against it. The expander is setting the tension. So on a three-piece oil control set, mm -hmm. if you want more tension, you change that expander, you're good to go. Exactly. So if this expander is longer, mm -hmm. you can force it in. That was the old way of doing it, right? So let's say you went to a boosted application. Mm -hmm. You're running a really high viscosity oil. Man, I need a lot of oil ring tension to scrape all that oil off because especially gotcha. high boost, I really don't want any oil in my combustion chamber because, again, detonation is right, right. going to be a problem. Well, the old way of doing it was just run an oversized expander. Say, I might uh, run 10, 15, 20 thousandths bore size over expander in my bore. So let's say I had maybe 90 millimeter bore. I may have gone with a 92 and a quarter or maybe a 95 millimeter or 90.5 millimeter bore expander and just squeeze it in there to make tension. Well, at some point you can't fit it in there, right? right. It starts to just waffle and won't go. We've come up with a process of using gas nitriding mm -hmm. like you do for other things. If you gas nitride that expander, it bumps it up three or four pounds of tension oh, right wow. off the go. The other nice part is this spring, like any other spring, mm -hmm loses spring rate, loses tension over time with use. Mm -hmm. So by gas nitriding the expander, not only do I boost my tension up, mm -hmm. I also make it where it's more stable. It doesn't want to lose that tension over time. So if you're doing high boost and you're using that higher viscosity oil, mm -hmm. Going to a gas nitride expander is a great way of getting that tension up so you get the proper oil control. Okay, so let's look at the lower compression ring, also called 
the second ring. Traditionally, these were just cast iron and then mm -hmm. some ductile, and now even we're seeing steel yes. uh, being used in this second ring. Mm -hmm. A lot of the magic behind that second ring has to do with that profile, correct? Yes. In, in, in actually scraping the oil off? Right. So the top ring is typically what we call a barrel face. Because mm -hmm. you know, the piston has a little bit of rock, top dead center, right. and a bottom dead center. So by having a barrel profile, as that piston rocks over, you maintain contact. It allows for that gotcha. distortion. Because the top ring's all about cylinder compression. Mm -hmm. That's sealing combustion pressure. Gotcha. That second ring, 80% of this job's ring, or, or this ring's job, is oil control. Oil control, gotcha. What we did in the past was you had a taper face. Okay. You think about a wedge, right? Mm -hmm. So it's trying to use that point, and that point's there to scrape the oil off the cylinder wall by having that point. Okay, didn't then, work too well. No, because well, it works really good when it's new. Okay. But as it wears it off, now that it becomes flat. Gotcha, gotcha. So you lose that point as it wears. So it just becomes a nub out there. Somebody came up with a better idea. Let's undercut that taper face. So you still have this taper face, mm -hmm. but I undercut it. Well, now I have what's called a napier. Gotcha. So you get this point out here that can really scrape oil well. Gotcha, so gotcha. a Napier second is what's been in vogue for a while because it can scrape oil better. And there's two reasons why you really want to go with a Napier. Mm -hmm. One, it can scrape oil better. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. by itself is, oh, better oil control. But number two, the more oil control scraping I can get from my second ring, mm -hmm the lower tension I can get away with my oil ring. So now my total ring package can have lower tension, which means more power that was being made from combustion can get to the crankshaft. Because you think about it, all the stuff that I've done in my life mm -hmm. is all about parasitic drag. Right. So between the oil and the piston rings, we're the guys who were robbing power mm -hmm. from the cylinder head guys. <laughs> you know, the well, cylinder head guys are working to try to get you know air in the engine. Yeah. The camshaft guys, <laughs> all my buddies in the industry, are all about getting air into the engine right. so you can burn it and make power. And then my job is to say, well, I'm trying not to waste as much of it as I possibly exactly. can. Exactly. Because that friction from that piston ring to mm -hmm. cylinder wall, that's going to be what, 30, 40% of the friction? Yes, yeah, I mean, Ford Motor Company recently published a study where they, mm -hmm. after years, 40% of all engine friction is this rubbing against the cylinder wall. That's the crazy. piston ring is the number one source of friction in your engine. And of course, what's causing all that friction is the moving the oil. So that's why we've gone to lower and lower oil viscosities over the year because this isn't running in the air, mm -hmm. it's running through oil. And all viscosity is, is a fancy word for resistance to flow. So mm -hmm. as a tribologist, friction wear, lubrication, and an oil guy in, in piston ring, all I do is rob power from the engine. <laughs> so I'm just trying to be less of a robber, take less out of your pocket so you have more power getting to the crankshaft. Now, the upper compression ring or top ring. Yes. You guys have something that's kind of unique. Mm -hmm. um, actually, it is very unique. I hadn't seen it before you guys came out with this, but it's actually taking that top ring, which like you mentioned before, there's better materials that mm -hmm. can do better things. There's better coatings and all that. The actual geometry of this is different by incorporating these- Lateral gas ports. Lateral gas ports. Our Club D-Sport pistons that we have for the mm -hmm. VR38, that's actually has those lateral gas ports machined in into the piston, but a lot of the pistons that you buy off the shelf, but you could get the benefit of that if you have an off the shelf piston by just upgrading to these. Exactly, so here, here's a shelf piston like you said before, mm -hmm. no gas ports. Another shelf piston over here, no gas ports. And the whole idea of the gas port is to let that gas pressure get behind the ring. I mean, gotcha. gas porting a piston is old technology. It's been around for mm -hmm, a long time because mm -hmm. people figured out that, hey, I need to run a tight clearance between the piston and the ring. Because mm -hmm. if there's a lot of clearance, now the ring can flop around. The higher the RPM, you get into ring flutter. Mm -hmm. So if I can run a tighter clearance, I can control the ring better to not have ring flutter. But then if I tighten it up, now I don't have as much pathway to get that gas pressure behind the ring because it's not the tension of the ring that actually seals it. It's the gas getting up behind us and forcing that out into right. the bore, right? So by putting these 15 lateral gas ports, these slots mm -hmm. in the top of the ring, it's allowing that gas pressure to get behind the ring easier, can force it out. The great part of it is, as opposed to having a big giant 
one and a half millimeter or two millimeter top ring mm -hmm. that's got all this tension and they're trying to resist the gas pressure right. or you know, combustion pressure. Now I can go with a one millimeter ring that's way thinner, way less tension, mm -hmm. so much lower friction, but I actually get better ring seal because this can conform. So it seals and gives the pressure when you need it. At the high compressor, high combustion pressures, the peak cylinder pressure, I'm getting maximum ring seal. And you can see it in the dyno. Mm -hmm. When you put a gas ported ring or a gas ported piston in an engine, it will always make more peak torque mm -hmm. because peak torque is peak cylinder pressure. Right. It's ring jujitsu. It's using that gas pressure to help seal as opposed to trying to fight it. Well, and the nice thing, when you have a gain on that side of actually getting more combustion uh, sealing, you're getting less blow by, you're getting less yes. crankcase issues to deal with, which can be a, a big issue on a lot of these vehicles. Well, I, I've said before, your fuel and your blow by are the enemy of your motor oil. And mm -hmm. the motor oil is the lifeblood of your engine. So you want to protect your motor oil. So the best way to do it is good ring seal. Now, this right here is a little bit of an illustration showing the new way and the old way. This is yeah, a uh, is. same manufacturer. This is Ross. Um, they made this piston here for Buick Grand National, and you see the. You'd probably be able to eyeball the size of those rings. What is that like? A that looks like a sixteenth, sixteenth, three sixteenth, maybe even bigger. That's a big oil ring. Yeah. <laughs> and taking that and moving. Is this a one or a one point two? That's a one two. One two. It's a one two top ring. And we. This is a great combination because we've got a gas ported ring with lateral gas ports in the piston. So we're gonna put all the cylinder pressure to it we can and know they've got good ring seal. Very cool. And this was kind of a piston that we're actually gonna be doing a test with to actually see when we went through this Buick Grand National engine mm -hmm. and kind of refreshing it, putting some new technologies in it. And with at the same boost level that we had previously, we're gonna see exactly how much of a performance increase we can get. And the reason why you're out here in California right now, you're mm -hmm. over at one of the uh, racing engine builders over there with piston rings, and I know you've done a lot of testing. Gas porting alone, I think you told me the last time on some of that testing, you're seeing, what is it, somewhere in the neighborhood of? I think we picked up about five or six power, horsepower last time. Okay. This is on a 400 horsepower engine, so right, it was you know, right. a good solid 1%. Just going from a conventional non-gas ported piston, Right with a non-gas ported ring, just putting a gas ported ring in that same piston, we picked up you know, five, six horsepower, which is a pretty good number for that size engine. The big thing is we also saw a huge drop in blow by. I remember that, that crankcase pressure. I, you, you had that, uh, that mechanical gauge thing yes. going on there and it basically dropped it to almost nothing compared oh, yeah, to what the, it yeah. was. So it was funny because the dining room is pressurized. Mm -hmm. You could actually see with the gas ported ring in there, the engine as the RPM go up, actually looking at crankcase pressure, watching that room dry out in terms of gas uh -huh. pressure. Because you're sucking so much air from the engine out the exhaust, the pressure in the room dropped and you could see it <laughs> with the pressure gauge, whereas with the conventional ring, with no, all it was doing was taking off. The yeah. higher the RPM went, the more pressure was going because there was that much blow by in the crankcase. So it was neat to see that. Now, what we're going to be doing this week is we're actually going from that traditional thicker ring mm -hmm. to the one millimeter ring. Mm. And we've already done it back to back with the conventional styles, no gas ports. Okay. Tomorrow, we're going to do gapless and gas ports. We're throwing everything in the kitchen sink at it to see gotcha. how much of a step is there by going both gapless and gas ported.